in Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, fourth chapter, <clears throat> beginning with verse 5, we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure, the light in our hearts of the glory of God in the face of Christ. We have this treasure in earthen vessels or jars that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. That introduces a subject that is kind of complex, but is critical for us to understand. This idea of the very light of the face of God, the presence of Jesus in our hearts, shining through our lives, but our lives are earthen jars. So you have this intermingling, really, of supernatural light and grace, truth, love, but it shines through our humanity, which is the earthen vessels. The earthen vessels, the earthen jar, is our mentality, our intellect, our ability to articulate, our reasoning capacity, or lack thereof, um, our temperaments, our emotions, our background and how we were raised, our tendencies. It's a, it is a complex and sometimes murky junction between the light, if we can use it another way, St. Paul talked about love out of a pure heart is what he aimed. He said, my whole aim of my preaching, love out of a pure heart, a good conscience, and sincere faith. That, those three qualities, characters, have to shine through earthen jars. And so it sets up then um, an interesting intersection that we have to be clear on. I'm going to read some of this so I don't um, muddle it up. In the plan of salvation, it's important to distinguish between the full extent of God's restoration of the moral image of holiness within and the fractured faculties of our humanity through which our moral character has to be expressed. The Bible's clear. It teaches that the atonement includes recovery of spiritual life from death in the new birth and forgiveness of sins. It also clearly teaches us the restoration of the image of God morally, in our moral, in our hearts, of purity, of cleanness, of holiness. God does not stop until he's able to restore in this life the moral image he created in us. <clears throat> now, the full light that resides, that we read of, that resides in our hearts, and is reflected through earthen jars is hindered at times, uh, obscured. That light can be obscured by the, the panes of the lantern through which the light has to shine, and that light is our human humanity. <clears throat> it, that difference right there the sometimes obscurity of love out of a pure heart shining through our humanity is the basis for what I can consider the majority of the objections that people make to the idea that the atonement includes a pure heart, that we can have a clean heart in this life, that we can be restored to holy heart in this life by the blood of Jesus through faith in his atonement. There are those who object to that strenuously. Much of the objection, I think, is due to 
that issue of the light shining through earthen jars. Aside from the objectors to the doctrine of heart purity, those who possess that grace can be subject to frustration, puzzlement, discouragement, and accusation due to the earthen jars hindering at times and seeming to um, betray what we have in our hearts, which is love, love in our hearts. It's critical that we learn to discern whether attitudes and actions are coming from our humanity or from our hearts. There are two or three different phrases that I want to look at in our next devotional on this subject. We have to look at the difference between, we can say, holiness and humanity. Or, another way to word it, humanity, what's human and what's carnal. Third, the phrase we'll probably use between purity and maturity. Purity directed at inbred sin in our hearts. Maturity directed at the earthen jars through which we have to express holiness. And the repair, partial repair in this life of the flaws and imperfections of our humanity. So we'll look at that um, next time. Father in heaven, this is an important issue. We see it all through scripture. We see the exhortations to trust for cleansing, but we also see the exhortation to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Help us to discern the difference. We have to know our diagnosis clearly of behavior, attitude, and so forth, and may we not misdiagnose them. Through your Spirit, help us to see clearly. In Christ's name, amen.